Monday morning, I woke up to the good news that my 2022 tax year has been finally assessed after numerous months of following up and trying to get a solution to it. And there was, there was quite a lot that has happened over the last three, four years, which actually woke me up to make sure that my tax is up to date. And I really just hope that you will get to a point where all your tax years are assessed and you are a tax compliant citizen. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Mrs. KK and this is The Wave. It is your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal, family and business finance. And really all we are hoping is that by the time we get to the end of this conversation, you are better equipped to make sound financial decisions. So if you are new here, thank you very much for stopping by and if you are already a returning subscriber, an awesome appreciation. So before I get into today's video, I'm going to share a little bit of a story and how I got woken up with this tax affairs um, situation. So pre-COVID-19, we did a lot of mobile travel where we travel outside um, the town we were stationed in. And also we did work outside Namibia. Particularly, I was seconded on one of our largest banking clients in Santon. And I would go there for eight consecutive weeks in the second half of the year. And I'll go back uh, for another eight weeks at the beginning of each year. And I did that for about three, two to three consecutive years. And obviously in that process, because you are stationed away from home, I was paid s &T. And because there was a lot of us from different African countries, there was Namibia, Mauritius, Ghana, Uganda, Nigeria. So they tried to get a common basis on how to pay everyone s &T, And it was concluded that we should be paid in US dollars, which is an equivalent um, as travel allowance for the Mauritian's counterpart. And obviously for uh, people that come from countries with weaker currency, that meant that the travel allowance that we, that we were being paid was slightly more than what we expected. So we never really spent the entire amount. And how travel and subsistence allowance normally work, your employer assume you are going to be, uh, you know, spending all that money on food and related costs while you are away from home. So they don't withhold tax from that s &T. And it's your responsibility as an employee to keep receipts um, for those expenses that you incur so that when you eventually submit your tax return, you can prove to the receiver of revenue back then, now NAMRA, that you actually did spend this money on work-related expenses. And, you know, sometimes we forget to collect this receipt. Sometimes we collect the receipts, but we are just lazy to keep up to date or to scan them. And it gets to a point where, you know, when you've accumulated accumulated 16 weeks worth of receipts, it can, it can get really a lot. So, and there was also at some point where NAMRA would accept letters from your employer that would just stipulate that you were sent away from work between this date and that date and the money you were spent was expended for business purposes. And NAMRA wouldn't ask you for any proof. And that was going on for a few years until they decided no they don't want those letters from employers anymore as an employee you need to approve actual expenses and that's where i got into trouble when i did my 2019 2020 and 2021 return as soon as i submitted it triggered a tax on all that s t that i was paid and uh, i went from a refundable position to a payable position the system threw that i owe about six thousand in taxes and it was accumulating interest and i was not going to just pay six thousand blankly to the receiver so I took it upon myself to summarize all those receipts. I went through the painful process of capturing the Bonnet pizza receipts, Worky Wednesday receipts, etc., etc. And I got to a point where I have all of the information in the in, in Excel. I resubmitted my return. I had to arrange an audit. It was a long process, and eventually I managed to get my refund. Uh, and that's when I actually told myself. I will never accumulate um, expenses for so long. I'll never make, leave my taxes unattended for more than a year because as soon as you have three years to clean up, it becomes a lot harder than just trying to clean up that way, that one year. So that's how I got up to date with my taxes. If it wasn't for that 6000 I probably would have been chilled and not really too bothered about my taxes. So in that process, I managed, eventually managed to get a refund. I've been refunded about three times now by NAMRA. So the first year that I started working, I was refunded automatically. I didn't have to do anything. I just got my refund um, automated, uh, automated. The second time I was then, it was this whole mess that I got myself into. I had to go through an audit and I got refunded three years worth of 
refunds at once so that was really really a, a good time for me except that it took a lot and i then i um, got my latest 2022 return refunded so i've been through this refund process about three times and each of it was a different challenge so the first year was fine the second year was this whole snt saga the third year was that I was in um, my my 2022 tax year was in to be audited status and it was just not getting audited. So I started following up and no one was returning to me. I, I escalated my query and I got to a point where I was told that I didn't submit um, one of my payee five from NAST. I had tutored for NAST on a part time basis and I completely forgot about it. So when I submitted, I selected the option of the uh, one that I worked for one employer. But obviously because NAST withheld pay as you earn and they submitted a request conciliation namra could see that i worked for two employers so they went assessing my return because of that so i had to re-request my payee file from nast and actually submit that to namra in order for them to be able to um audit my return the second one was that i submitted without actually knowing that my uh, information that is pulling automatically on items that my employer submitted versus the information that was on the payee file that i submitted that i got from my employer wasn't matching there was a small amount of cell phone allowance that wasn't matching and as a result my return was also not being audited so i had to go back to finance finance had to re-request a reconciliation from namra fix that small error then back to namra the namra fixed it and eventually it got to an assist uh, status now i'm just waiting for the refund to land in my account so that is the challenges that i've been facing and oh my goodness last year so with this whole 20, 2019 to 2021 eventually after i got through all that mess my refund was paid but i was just not getting the money and then i followed up again to say that you know it says i've been refunded but i haven't gotten the money and it turned out that i had an old bank account on itis and they asked me to submit a bank confirmation in order for them to update my bank accounts because there are only certain things you can um change by yourself on itis other things that you can't change for example you can change your name your surname up upload a proof of changes and get it through but you can't change your own banking details for obvious reason because if anyone can change banking details refund could be paid in incorrect bank accounts so i think that is a good control that namra has on their end so after that i had to submit a bank um confirmation for them to update my details my bank confirmation was on my new surname then i had to Oh, fill in another form to change my surname first it was a long process so i just felt like there's a lot of nitty gritties and hiccups that a lot of people are experiencing when it comes to the refund process hence i'm putting out this video and i hope it doesn't get too long if it gets too long maybe i might cut it or we'll see how it goes all right so i'm gonna go through these questions quickly and then see how far we get with the video so number one is that a lot of people are saying i've been submitting my tax return since 2016 since 2018 since whatever and i don't have and i haven't received any refund how does it work okay so you need to understand that um just because you are submitting it doesn't mean that you will be eligible for a refund you are only eligible for a refund if your employer has over deducted pay pay as you end throughout the year and there are very few instances where your employer would have um, over deducted and also sometimes you may have deduction that your employer is not aware of such that when you are filling in your tax return you bring in this additional deduction and as a result the tax you would have paid throughout the year would have been a lot than what you should have paid and therefore you would have you would be eligible to a refund so simply submitting does not equate to a refund and when you submit you should be able to see already then at the time of submission whether you are due for a refund or you are in a zero position or you are due to pay namra in in any in in, in a few instances so i'm gonna go off a few go over a few things that would put you in a refundable position so that you you can maybe reflect and see if you have any of those situation that you would potentially uh, enable you to get a refund number one if you have worked for part of the year and your income did not exceed the minimum threshold of 50,000. So for a lot of people that start work in January, you would have only worked January, February, and the tax year ends at the end of February. So by the virtue of the fact that you end only two months worth of um, 
an income you wouldn't have been able you, you most probably especially if your salary is not too big you wouldn't have met the fifty thousand threshold and therefore you wouldn't be eligible for tax or even if you are eligible for tax your employer would have assumed you worked throughout the year whereas you only worked for two months so they might have over deducted slightly and when you submit your return the system will be able to throw up what your actual pay and you end should have been and therefore you will be eligible for a refund and that is the reason why i got a refund in my first year as an article clerk is because i paid tax for two months and i wasn't over the threshold of the fifty thousand. so that is the first instance that would really put you in a refundable position the second instance would be perhaps you worked overtime for some ad hoc months of the year and your employer took your your salary including the overtime annualize it and assume that's the salary you earn throughout the year obviously you don't earn let's say that you worked overtime in one month your overtime was about two thousand they took your salary that you normally add add two thousand annualize that and taxed you so you that might push you into a different tax bracket and as a result they would have overcharged you tax for that month and if you work work overtime a few times a year and that happens you would definitely be eligible for a refund because when you take your actual income it will be lower than your annual annualized income or if you get a bonus that might also push you into a higher tax bracket for that month you might be taxed at a higher tax bracket and therefore you might be eligible for a refund so really only when you have some ones off related income or you worked half of the year that you are going to be eligible for a refund but how do you know that you're eligible for a refund or not only when you have submitted your tax return you would have uh, um, put in everything and the system would um, ass assess you and they will say that you are due for a refund and the one way for you to see if you are due for a refund is to check your tax status on ITIS if it says it's to be audited then you are due for a refund because NAMRA wasn't, wouldn't just automatically refund you before they audit you so if it says assessed or uh, if it says assessed then that means you are likely not to due for a refund because um, there is nothing and if it says you owe them then you need to look at what is causing you to owe them money and it's not always necessarily correct that just because it says you owe them it it, it really is correct because sometimes they disallow a certain expenses and it's a valid expenses and it, the onus is on you to go challenge them and say why are you disallowing my expenses uh, when i'm actually supposed to be getting the, the this deduction Oh, um, one of the good example was when I submitted my tax return for 2022, um, the tax certificate I got from my retirement annuity didn't have the correct tax number. So when I was trying to claim that additional deduction, it made it as if it was claimed. But the moment I pressed submit, it disallowed that expenses. And I asked, then I saw them, they were saying that I owe them. Then I went to check at the revised return then i saw that they disallowed my expenses and when i followed up it turned out that i needed to get a right tax number for my retirement annuity so simply because namra says they owe you it doesn't necessarily mean they are correct all the time but when it comes to situations like this unless you really have a tax background you won't really know what the issue is so i would always say that if you're unsure consult someone that is knowledgeable in tax to make sure that you are either paying the right taxes or you are getting the right refund that is due to you okay so the next question that I'm going to address is, I have about a 30K refund still to be audited. How do, go, how do I go about it? The one thing that I can tell you is NAMRA is behind with their audits, especially when they migrated from a manual system to ITAS, they're still trying to catch up some of those systems. So if you want your tax year to be audited promptly, you need to follow up because whoever screams the loudest gets attention. So if you're following up every time, they will take up your case. But if you are just quiet, they assume you're not in a hurry, you don't really need the money and they'll get to your file as and when they get to it so obviously there is a queue but following up will make sure that you put yourself in front of the queue and your return gets audited and you get your refund in due course and how long does it take to be refunded when you're after you submit it like i've mentioned it will take as long as you are not audited so if you're if you submit and it says it's to be audited you need to follow up constantly or so that you can get audited and once you are audited normally the process is much quicker because your refund is then approved and it should automatically um lend in your bank account if you get an sms that says it's to it's approved but you don't get a refund within a week or so you should follow up because that means maybe there is uh, a problem that the people didn't release your payment or maybe they've released your payment but the money has bounced back because your your bank account is not correct like in my case last year where i had to update my banking details 
I have submitted tax certificate twice, but no refund. This is similar to the first question where the people are saying they've submitted since 2016, but they haven't received anything. You could have submitted and you may not have been in the refundable position. So you need to go back on ITIS and see what's the status of your return. Some of you guys have submitted. You actually owe NAMRA. You are waiting for NAMRA to, um, sub to refund you. So you need to check what does it say? Does it say assessed? Does it say, you know, balance due that it says, um, you know, to be audited? Only when it's audited, it means that you're going to be, only when it says to be audited, it means that you're in a refundable position. If it says otherwise, you probably don't have any refund or you actually owe NAMRA. So you need to look at the status of your return. Um, then there's been quite a few um, questions around, I'm a student and I'm being paid an allowance and it's been taxed or I am uh, working on a contract and I've paid tax, can I get my money back? Like I've mentioned, you are only going to be able to know when you submit your return, submit your return and see what your actual tax paid is versus um, what you actually were withheld. The reason why companies are prudent and they always deduct taxes, even if they know you're not gonna meet the threshold is because they don't want to bear the responsibility of penalties and interest if they underpay or if they don't comply with the tax. So the onus is on you to submit your return and claim your refund. So for students, it's slightly trickier um, because most of the students, unless your allowance is more than 50,000 a year, I wouldn't understand why it should be taxed. But for people that are on contract, yes, you might be on contract Contract, but you might exceed the 50,000 threshold. Therefore, your employer is obliged to register you for tax and also withhold uh, pay as you earn. The best, the best you can do for yourself is submit and claim a refund if you are eligible for one. And lastly is how do I get my refund without contacting NAMRA? Like in my first year of work, I got my refund without contacting NAMRA. They audited me promptly and I got my money. But the thing, the, the situation with the, um, and I was also based in a small town then, um, but I think the situation with NAMRA at the moment is just the backlog and the migration from, you know, manual system to ITIS. There is so much and the, and the whole rebrand of receiver of revenue to NAMRA and restructuring of employees, there is really a lot that needs to be caught up. So unless you are willing and patient to wait, um, you will get your refund eventually. But if you really, really want your money, the best way is just for you to follow up and make noise as much as you can in order for you to get your money. All right, this is all I'm going to be addressing in this video. I don't want it to be very, very long. I might do another video depending on the questions that comes up. And I might also do a video on um, types of re reports you can pull from ITIS to actually assess where you stand. Because you can pull set specific reports to show you how many of re your returns are outstanding, how many of your, your year have been assessed, and what is the balance that's currently on your ITIS and... Um, also, there's also where you can check your basic information, including your bank account, to check the accuracy. There's a lot of reports you can pull. Um, the, the issue with uh, ITIS is that it looks like it's not user friendly until you know where you are pressing. But if you know where you're going, it's much easier because it's literally just drop down. And for many of us, the only tax we pay is income tax. We don't have vet, we don't have estate duties, and all of that. So the only function we really use in is, is income tax. So this is all I have from today's video. Please let us know in the the comment section below if this video has been useful to you and i know i've been growing at a snail's pace on youtube so i really really highly encourage you guys to share our videos with your friends and family share this on your whatsapp status whatsapp status is actually my biggest driver to youtube it's what gives me the most traffic so please don't forget to like subscribe and share these videos with your friends to help us grow this amazing community until next time it is goodbye and please keep safe